An unidentified space shuttle crashes on Earth's surface, leaving a trail of debris across the United States. People are terrified, and they're hesitant to touch the debris for fear of becoming infected. Tucker Kaufman, the director of the CDC, shows up at the scene that the government has designated as a contamination zone. There he finds out that the organism can withstand massive amounts of radiation while also rapidly multiplying. When he leaves, he accidentally touches a piece of debris and contaminates himself. When Tucker returns home, his dog comes to greet him at the door, but immediately the dog growls and walks away from him. Later, as he sleeps, he begins to sweat profusely and a strange cellular condensation forms on his face. We are then introduced to Carol, who is Tucker's ex-wife and also a psychiatrist. That night, her son Oliver has a nightmare and begins to scream, but she comforts him and gives him a pill before he goes to sleep. Tucker calls Carol the next morning and demands to see his son, but Carol declines and hangs up. She drops Oliver off at school and meets her best friend, Dr. Ben Driscoll, who is driving her to the office. Ben informs her that a large number of scientists have resigned because they believe the shuttle crash was a planned event. Carol then informs him of Tucker's phone call and reveals that he has never been a good father. However, Ben convinces her that, just like her, Tucker has a right to see his son. When Carol arrives at her office, she sees one of her patients, Wendy, waiting for her. Wendy informs Carol that her husband is acting strangely. She goes on to say that her husband even killed their dog and dumped it in the garbage. Carol realizes something is wrong. However, she prescribes Wendy new medications and asks her to contact her immediately if her husband behaves like that again. The Invasion tells the story of a mysterious epidemic that alters the behavior of human beings. When Carol, a Washington, D.C. psychiatrist, discovers that the origin of the epidemic is extraterrestrial, she must go fight to protect her son, who may hold the key to stopping the escalating invasion. Will Carol find a cure for the virus? Watch till the end to find out. That evening, Carol and her friends take their kids outside since it's Halloween. Meanwhile, a boy named Andy is attacked by a dog, but he does not appear to be scared. Instead, he uses his bare hands to squeeze the dog's mouth. When Carol reaches home, she senses something is wrong with Andy, since he appears to be detached from others. Later, she discovers the strange patch of skin on Oliver's hand and carefully places it in a bag. Carol brings the skin sample to Ben's hospital the next day, where his colleague Dr. Stephen Galliano begins his investigation on it. In the meantime, a mysterious virus has begun to spread throughout the country. Tucker is holding a press conference to discuss the new vaccine and its ability to keep the virus contained. Later, we see some people with blank expressions, spitting their saliva into the beverage that will be served to the people at the conference. Carol and Oliver are on their way to Tucker's house when they come across a woman who stops the car and starts begging for help. She keeps saying that something terrible will happen, and all of the sudden, she's hit by a van. Soon, cops arrive on the scene, and Carol says she witnessed the accident and can provide a statement. But the policeman tells her to leave, and that if she's needed, they will call her. When Carol and Oliver arrive at Tucker's house, he greets them with a lifeless expression. Nevertheless, she leaves Oliver with his father and goes to a party with Ben. The party is hosted by Henry, a Czech diplomat, and his wife, Ludmilla. They are introduced to Yorish, a Russian diplomat who debates with Carol about the dark nature of humans. After the party, Ben and Carol kiss for a moment, but she quickly backs away, saying she doesn't want to ruin their friendship. In the meantime, Oliver is hanging out with his friend, Jean, when he mentions that something is wrong with his father. As he walks into the house, Tucker offers Oliver a hot chocolate containing his saliva. When Carol returns home, a census worker with the same expression tries to break into her home. Thankfully, she protects herself by locking the door on time and calls Ben to come over immediately. The next morning, Carol notices that many people are just standing lifeless on the street while staring oddly as she drives towards her office. When she arrives at the office, she discovers that all of their patients have canceled their appointments for the day. After experiencing a mysterious series of events, she begins looking for similar incidents on the internet. She discovers that many people around the world are noticing the odd behaviors of people around them. Even her secretary, Carly, acts strangely and brings her a cup of tea to drink. But Carol is interrupted by a phone call from Ben and does not drink the tea. Later, Stephen informs Carol that he's completed the examination of the patch of skin. He found that it contains highly resilient spores that take over a human's body when they enter REM sleep. When the spores enter the human body, it reprograms the genetic expression, so the infected people should avoid sleeping to stay normal. Meanwhile, Ben receives a phone call from Ludmilla, who is concerned about Yorish's strange behavior. The three of them rush to Ludmilla's house, where Yorish is lying on a bed with cellular condensation all over him. Carol tries to take a photo of him, but he abruptly awakens and tries to attack her. Thankfully, Ben pulls Yorish out before any serious harm, but he crawls on the floor, 
vomits a fluid, and then dies instantly. Seeing this, Carol is concerned about her son and rushes to Tucker's house to find him. Carol arrives at Tucker's house to find him in the middle of a meeting with his colleagues, who are staring at her strangely. She's worried about Oliver, but Tucker assures her that he's with his friend Jean, but she is not convinced. As she starts packing Oliver's belongings, Tucker and his colleagues surround her. He explains that after being infected, she will also be like him and that they're offering a better world with greater humanity. He then pins her to the ground and spits saliva on her to infect her with the virus. Carol manages to escape and runs to Jean's house, where his mother is lying dead. In a state of panic, she drives recklessly and causes an accident. Desperate to find her son, she runs to the road and asks for help, but no one responds to her plea. As she enters a subway, she receives a message from Oliver stating that his father has brought him to a strange place. Meanwhile, she looks around and notices passengers behaving oddly. One of the passengers on the train advises her to remain calm and show no emotion in order to fool the infected. Suddenly, a few infected people enter the train and start attacking the passengers. She somehow manages to escape the train and tries to remain calm with a blank face to fool the infected. Later, Carol joins Ben and Steven at Ludmilla's house, where they discover that the spores spread via blood or other bodily fluids. They must remain awake as there's no way of knowing if they are infected. Steven and his assistant plan to go to Fort Detrick to find a virus cure, while Ben decides to join Carol to find Oliver. Meanwhile, Henrik returns home with a large number of infected people, but the group runs away before the infected can find them. Carol sees Wendy being detained by the police on the street because even though she has slept, she has not yet been contaminated. This makes her think Wendy is immune to the virus. Then, Ben and Carol rush to her office to check Wendy's medical records. Turns out that Wendy has a brain-affecting illness called ADEM, which prevents the spore from taking over the brain matter and helps them become immune. Carol realizes her son has the same illness and wonders if he's immune to the virus as well. Just then, Ben receives a call from Steven, informing him that he's arrived at Fort Detrick and is currently working with other scientists to find a cure for the virus. Meanwhile, Carol receives a text from Oliver, saying he's being held at his grandmother's house in Baltimore. She then reveals to Ben that she's infected, but Ben advises her not to sleep and assures her that everything will be fine. Then, they go outside and part ways with each other. Carol manages to get to the train station by maintaining an expressionless face. On the train, she greets Jean, who is now infected. Jean tells her that his parents are no longer alive, so he lives with Tucker and is on his way to his house. Once they arrive in Baltimore, Tucker arrives at the station to pick them up. That evening, he receives a call from his colleagues and goes outside. Seizing the opportunity, Carol scans the house and finally reunites with her son. Oliver tells her that despite sleeping every day, he's still not infected. Suddenly, Jean shows up and catches them, but Carol pushes him away, knocking him unconscious and escapes with Oliver. On the way out, Tucker and his colleagues start chasing them. They manage to hide in a basement, but Tucker follows them and attempts to harm them. However, Carol grabs an iron rod and strikes him in the head, ultimately killing him. Next, Carol and Oliver arrive at a pharmacy, where Carol takes some pills to stay awake. She hands Oliver an injection to inject her in case she falls asleep. She then calls Ben and tells him her location. In the meantime, she discovers a room full of infected people and manages to grab a gun from one of them. But soon, people in the infected room awaken and repeatedly knock on the door to get out. This wakes Oliver up, and when he notices his mother has fallen asleep, he injects her and wakes her as well. After some time, Ben finally arrives, but he is also infected now. Just like Tucker, he also tries to persuade Carol to accept the new society with no crime, war, or violence. Ben also bluntly adds that there is no room for people like Oliver who are immune. He opens the door to the infected people, and when they try to approach Oliver, she shoots them all dead. To escape the scene at any cost, she even shoots Ben in the leg. Carol gets into a car with Oliver and drives away as a group of infected people tries to break in. She receives a call from Steven, and Oliver picks up the phone. While his mother drives the car, he tells Steven where their location is. Following that, Steven instructs her to go to the top of a building so that he can pick them up in a helicopter. After some struggle, they make it to the roof of the building while being chased by a crowd of infected people. Finally, they're picked up by the helicopter and flown to the medical center. Cut to one year later, a vaccine has been developed, medications have been distributed globally, and the alien virus has been successfully eradicated. Steven, who was a key figure in developing the vaccine, says that infected people have no memory of their experiences of being infected. Lastly, Carol and Ben have moved in together and are now living with Oliver and Jean as they plan to watch more recap videos like this.